Several of the Psalms that we find, starting here in Book 2 of the Psalms, are attributed to a group of people who refer to themselves as the Sons of Korah. Many of their Psalms deal with some of the darker issues of human existence, such as dealing with death and depression. Many of these Psalms hint at the theme of resurrection from Sheol, or the realm of the grave. As the first Korah, see the Book of Numbers, fell into Sheol alive, so the Sons of Korah, seen of being raised up out of Sheol alive, in many Hebrew manuscripts, Psalms 42 and 43 constitute one psalm. The writer sings, As the deer pants for water, so my soul longs for you, O God. Your waves break over me. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Hope in God. He continues, Vindicate me, O God. Why have you rejected me? Send forth your light and your truth. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Hope in God. In Psalm 44, the sons of Korah sing, O God, our fathers have told us how you drove out the nations, but now you have sold your people. Awake, O Lord, rise up and help us. The ungodly nation referred to here may have been the Arameans of Damascus. Perhaps the author had been taken captive by the Arameans during one of their incursions into Judah. Psalm 45 was a psalm by the sons of Korah, which was to be sung at weddings. It was based on a popular tune at the time that went by the title, Lilies. The song was probably used at more than one royal wedding in David's dynasty. It says, My heart overflows with verses for the king. Your God has anointed you with gladness. All glorious is the princess in her chamber. In Psalm 46, the sons of Korah say, God is our refuge. We will not fear, though the earth give way. The nations rage, kingdoms fall. For God says, Be still, and know that I am God. In Psalm 47, the sons of Korah say, Clap your hands, you nations. How awesome is the Lord Most High. Sing praises to our God. Sing praises. He is King of all the earth. In Psalm 48, the sons of Korah say, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. O God, we ponder your love in your temple. The term Zion in the Old Testament is used as kind of a code word for the coming kingdom of God. Zion was a symbol of God's dominion over the whole earth, as well as the promise of a great future when the Gentiles would come and submit to Israel's God. The worship of the temple was a foretaste of that future, when David's kingdom would extend over all humanity forever. The very presence of Zion in a human city, Jerusalem, was proof that God's covenant was with people and that, unlike the gods of the nations, he would indeed dwell among us. In Psalm 49, the sons of Korah say, Hear this, all peoples. Man in his pomp will not endure. He is like the beasts that perish, but God will ransom my soul from Sheol. The psalmist portrayed death, or the grave, as an insatiable monster feeding upon its victims. The grave, in Hebrew Sheol, refers in a general way to the realm of the dead, the netherworld, where it was thought departed souls lived. The Israelites viewed death as the opposite of life, and resurrection was not yet a part of their communal experience with God. The grave, in their view, brought no escape from God, but just how the ancient Israelites viewed the condition of the godly dead is unclear.